First thing first, Kevin, how are you? Not too bad, not too bad. All well, good. Before we talk about uh, the music and your record, I'd like to go back uh, a little bit. Yeah. You come, uh, your great grandparents, I believe, were yeah. opera singers. Yeah, yeah, my great grandparents. Uh, yeah, they, they sang uh, back in like the 1900s. Was there a lot of opera music playing when you were growing up? Not really at all. I only kind of found out that they were when I was like 15. Okay. Like, I don't know what, I think my mum and dad must have told me a few times before that. But I, I just kind of found out. And then I found out that they have a vinyl somewhere. Okay. I don't know where it is. I think my uncle in Australia has it or something like that. But um, yeah, I got to find it. But, yeah. Opera singers. <laughs> I'm crap at opera. I couldn't do opera, but... But did, uh, were your parents then musical? Yeah, my, my dad and my mom just love music anyway. So okay. I grew up listening to all different types of music. My brother always listened to like everything, like from Blur to like all this weird techno stuff. All right. So he, I used to share a room with him. So he used to have his radio on and just like play everything. So that was always cool. My sister sings. Okay. She's a gospel singer. So she taught me how to sing pretty much. And so, um, what, what, what were you gravitating towards early on in terms of music? Uh, kind of, I don't know, I, I, I started off playing like Led Zeppelin covers. I was in a three-piece band, just Led Zeppelin, all Led Zeppelin. Jimi Hendrix and Cream and like a lot of Rory Gallagher, Irish mm -hmm. guitarist, amazing, super good. And then, so I even, I sanded down my guitar to make it look old. Like I had a really bad SX, or Squire, no, Squire. Actually, it was actually a really nice sounding guitar for some reason, but um, I sanded it down to make it look really old and vintage and stuff. So I used to just play guitar. I used to draw straws in the band that I was in to who would have to sing. Right. So I used to sing, and then my drummer used to sing. Ian used to sing a little bit, and then uh, eventually I just kind of sang. But I sounded terrible. <laughs> but, but, but what was that the first time you kind of had to sing, or were you singing before as well? I think I was messing about a little bit with. So I had like two things. I used to like play Coldplay songs and like Bob Dylan songs on the acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. And then I'd go into the band and I'd play all these hard rock kind of screamy songs and I'd have no voice afterwards. And then, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I always kind of wanted to sing. I never thought I was good ever until I, I kind of did pub gigs and I learned how to kind of use my voice properly and do different kind of notes and different things. And yeah. well, well, because you mentioned you were playing guitar uh, in a three-piece band playing Led Zeppelin and yeah. Jimi Hendrix, that kind of stuff. So when did it become something that, that you were doing by yourself in pubs? Or were you, with the three-piece, were you in pubs as well? No, I kind of, um, when I left, when I finished school, I uh, I just, me and my friend Craig, he played acoustic guitar as well. So me and him just thought like, oh, we do one gig every week in a pub, just do like covers, like all, this, all different covers, like yeah. Damien Rice and Glenn Hansen. And, I mean, and then eventually I got to Sam Cook and Frank, like, we're, Frank Sinatra, which you shouldn't play like he was the guitar because you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I started doing all these mad songs and like the Jungle Book and all these crazy stuff. And then uh, eventually he did like seven gigs a week, seven nights a week. Okay. And then on a Wednesday it was like 12 o'clock till two o'clock, four o'clock till seven o'clock and then nine o'clock till 12 o'clock. So like really hard hours and kind of like tough. I don't even know how I can talk anymore. but. Uh, so it's great, I did it for like three years. So I think that's what kind of helped me be able to talk to crowds and because they're tough crowds like Temple Bar is just right, drunk, right. tough crowds like all. It's a proper it's a tourist area, so it's you're playing in front of different crowd every night and you've no idea what to expect. Like yeah. But that's the best way to do it, I think, because I it, learned how to sing properly and then I learned how to deal with crowds and stuff. Yeah, is there, is there one particular thing that you took away from from that period where because it, as you say it's kind of the time to, to hone your craft in a way? Pretty much, that's exactly what I took from it. It's just, uh, it was all a learning experience, pretty much. Like, there was all these, like, if I lost my voice, I knew not to do this certain thing mm -hmm. with my voice. And I knew not to go out every night and show in the nightclub until I can't talk in the morning. So um, all this stuff that I could be learning right now, um, I, I kind of got through when I was right. uh, learning back then, so. And, and by that time, when you started going to these pubs, were you writing your own material? Yeah, I started like, I always kind of wrote my own stuff, but I never fully delved into it and kind of worked at it a lot. But uh, when why, I, why not? I don't know, I just kind of, I love playing. I loved, I loved, uh, I just love playing pretty much. And I just kind of 
then I grew to love singing and then I started loving writing songs and then from that I, uh, I started doing the songs at the gigs and then people used to come in. By the end of it when I was finishing up, um, by the end of it there was like 500 people okay. came in and they all, just, I used to do like three of my own songs, but they knew every single word and I was like, okay. this is kind of cool. So I, I, I quit, I stopped it and then was broke for like a year and a bit, like a lot, like just really bad. And then <laughs> pretty much uh, got into just doing, doing open mic nights and meeting new people, meeting new musicians, kind of chatting to them, see how they do their things. And it's great, it's, it's fun. And, and going back to, to writing your own material, yeah. what kind of, what compelled you to, to write? Um, I think, I don't know, man. I, I think I've I seen, uh, I just started listening to a lot of Damien Rice and I loved like, how he was writing about stuff and Counting Crows and J Jeff Buckley and all these people that were just, the lyrics and all were just amazing and everything like that. So I wanted to just get into it myself. Do, do you draw from own experience in that way? Yeah, 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 yeah. Big time. Like the whole the album that I'm working on at the moment is uh, the first one. It's the first album. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much just like, since it was that size until now. <laughs> so um, it's all about that. Do, well, is, is it difficult to do? To, to, well, you've done it for three years in, in pubs, but to kind of open up your soul to, to all these people and kind of have them live? I don't know, I think it's different. Uh, sometimes, I think, you know, no, it's hard to do if you're in like a, uh, at a party or something like that, mm. and you got to sing your own song at a party or something. But if you're doing your own gig, people are there to hear, hopefully, hopefully they're there to hear your own song. <laughs> And uh, I think, I don't know, it's, it turns into like an autopilot sort of thing. You just play them as if they're not even your songs, even though you pretty much just like play them. <laughs> and, and well, the, on the, at least the, the, the live album, a lot of the songs deal with relationships. Yeah. So do these people know that you write about them? I think a lot of them, a lot of the songs are kind of about just one in particular, one girl in particular. So uh, the rest of them are kind of, uh, I guess nearly belched up my sushi. Uh, the rest of them are kind of about uh, just growing up in Dublin, like in school, like the bullying and stuff in school. And then like just being a teenager and being down and getting down and then getting back up and then down, down, down. Just stuff like that, yeah, pretty much. And then a lot of them are relationship kind of orientated, but they're kind of about everything really, I think. And, well, you mentioned early on that you, you didn't think you could sing quite well. So, mm. at what point did you, was there a moment when it kind of turned on you? When, when you think, well, I actually have a really good voice? I never really thought I had a really good voice. I hate listening to my voice. I kind of, um, I don't know, I think if people like it, I think then that's good. Then you kind of think that maybe you should do it properly, do it like as a career maybe. But I just love doing it. I think it's okay. just a lot of fun. So, yeah. so never really a conscious. Never really hit me consciously that I, I could sing that. I, I just think it's fun. Okay. <laughs> it's a fun thing to do. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so, so, well, you mentioned uh, playing all these all these gigs in bars, mm. then then taking a year off anyway. Yeah. Um, so, so uh, how long ago was that when you took that year off? Um, twenty one. I I signed it. Uh, twenty twenty actually, probably twenty. Okay. So yeah. about about. Uh, Two years ago. Yeah, I was 23 now. So yeah, it would have been summer three years ago, maybe. Oh, three so, years ago. So yeah. So the and then, well, if if we take the last two two and a half years, which which must have been been crazy for you. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. So how did you experience that going from from playing in bars and having this? What was your outlook then? I was mad. I don't know. It's it's hard to kind of see. The only t time that was a bit. Surreal when I did the James Blunt tour right. in uh, France, and we're doing these. Even we did a gig in Brussels in Forest National, and like it was scary. I didn't even know how big the gigs were going to be. This is my first proper tour mm. with um, in Europe, and uh, I just brought the guitar. I was like, I was talking to the manager and stuff. I was like, Ed, should I bring a band with me? Are these gigs a bit big. It's like, nah, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. So we did Brussels, and it's like twelve thousand people, and I was just up there with the guitar. I didn't even want to go on. I was like, no. No, 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 not doing it, not doing it. And I did sit with a guitar and it was scary, but it was cool. Because you know, I think it, it, you don't have to say as much. <laughs> it's like, hello, Brussels. Yeah. Because it is quite, quite. Uh, it's a big jump from, from exactly. pub gigs. So, so, 
Was it daunting? Well, you totally. Just, I was shitting it. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was good though, man. It was, it was fun. Uh, some buzz though after them sort of gigs. Afterwards, you're just going to like, ah, right. it's great. But I, I would never have thought I'd been doing stuff like that. You know, I was looking at like the academy and stuff like back home. Like, I was looking at, I really want to do something. I was trying to get places like to play. Mm. Like three years ago, like, will you let me play in this place? Like 200 people kind of thing. So it's just great to be able to do it, I suppose.